with a look on how Team Harris is preparing. Hey, Peter. And Lawrence, Vice President Harris has some explaining to do if President Trump decides to go there. For example, there is this new questionnaire that she filled out in 2019 where she talks about how she wants gender transition surgeries for migrants. The exact quote is, I support policies ensuring that federal prisoners and detainees are able to obtain medically necessary care for gender transition, including surgical care while incarcerated or detained. And then there's funding cuts to ICE. Also in 2019, Harris wrote, our immigration detention system is out of control, and I believe we must end the unfair incarceration of thousands of individuals, families, and children. I was one of the first senators after President Trump was elected to advocate for a decrease in funding to ICE. The Harris-Trump stand-in the last couple days at debate camp. Philippe Reines watched old Trump debates with the sound off to get Trump's mannerisms down. And now in the mock debates, he is dressing like Trump as well, according to The New York Times. And they're practicing with these rules. Muted microphones. No live studio audience. Only a pen, a paper, and water on stage. No pre-written notes. The answers are two minutes. The rebuttals are two minutes. And the follow-ups are one minute. I think he's going to lie. And, um, you know, he has a playbook that he has used in the past, um, be it, you know, his attacks on President Obama or Hillary Clinton. So we should expect that some of that might come out. According to Politico, the whole entire Harris debate strategy hinged on being able to fact check him in real time. And when they have the mics muted, she's not going to be able to do that. So in Pittsburgh, they've apparently been trying to figure out how exactly she is supposed to debate when she cannot be jumping in. But it's entirely a problem of their own making. The Democratic staffers who are working for Vice President Harris now were working for Joe Biden. They created these rules. They requested these rules. And Trump agreed months ago to protect Joe Biden. She is now bound by them. Back to you. <laughs> hey, Peter, do, do we have any idea... Are they going to come out and shake hands? It doesn't seem like it, unless there is a spontaneous uh, handshake, because everything is supposed to be the same. And so there was no handshake last time uh, when it was Biden and Trump. And there was no handshake in Nashville or in Cleveland in 2020 because of COVID. So oh, yeah. the last handshake on stage at a debate like this would be in 2016, Trump and Clinton. Peter, uh, Media Research Center Because says, they were very friendly. <laughs> right. Peter, the Media Research Center is saying that uh, David Muir's coverage on ABC of, of these two candidates, the coverage of Kamala Harris has been 100% uh, positive, and of Donald Trump, 93% negative. Are you hearing any rules, any comments from ABC, or how, how can we ensure that this will be fair? It's really... Uh, I, I know that... I don't know. Uh, I haven't heard anything about exactly how the moderators are preparing. A lot like the candidates, uh, they are keeping their preparations quiet. Uh, I know that Trump was really skeptical going into the CNN debate, and he has had some friendly things to say about Jake Tapper and Dana Bash afterwards. Uh, we just don't know. And a lot of this will be up to Kamala Harris, the things that she wants to bring up on stage, and Donald mm -hmm. Trump and the things that he wants to bring up how they respond and how the moderators either uh, let them go or just start cutting the mics. Can't wait. Yeah. Great uh, job, thanks. Peter. You know, there were a few times when uh, Biden or, or Trump would talk, they put the mics up. Mm -hmm. So even though they were supposed to be quiet, so like they'd right. be hearing something and you'd see the uh, audio person's mic goes up. And the one reason uh, the, where the debate, well, moderators will come in, two minutes, two minutes is two minutes. Whoever asks the questions. If, if three quarters of the questions are about abortion, then you're putting your hand on the scale. If, uh, if all of it's on uh, the economy, if two-thirds is on the economy, you'd have to say, well, it's because it's overwhelming, the number one issue. But I worry about the two-minute answers to questions and then the two-minute rebuttals. Then you have this one extra minute for follow-ups, clarifications, or responses. Mm -hmm. That's when we find out if ABC wants to keep that perfect score going, well, under 100 mm -hmm. percent positive for, uh, for Kamala Harris. And then Trump has got to be ready for that mentally, Point it out and move. Point it out and move. Well, he also has to point to the, the big dump that was actually just put on uh, in our report from CNN's KFAL talking about her um, 
wanted to end all detentions, taxpayer gender transitions uh, for people that are here illegally and legally. Uh, she wants to end ICE detainers with local police. Uh, she wants to decriminalize all drugs. When was this, this done? When this was, was this done in 2019. It was in response to the ACLOU, and they released a statement to the KFAL. This advisor didn't want to put their name on it, didn't say who it was from, and this is what they said to the KFAL. The vice president's position has been shaped by three years of effective governance as part of the Biden-Harris administration. So, on one hand, they have said, she said publicly, that she has not changed her positions. Mm -hmm. Now the her campaign is saying changed. that <laughs> it's been shaped right. by the administration. So, which one is it? Has she changed or has she not changed? I don't think this statement is going to cut it. Well, I, it would be impossible for ABC not to address the flip-flops or policy 100%. changes or being pragmatic. Yeah, they're, they're going to talk a little bit about that. But, you know, there is such high risk but high reward on this particular event because there was one interview 10 days ago. It was kind of a, yeah. Uh, and, and now there's going to be one debate that we know of. And uh, Bill McGurn writes today in the Wall Street Journal about this. He says, on Tuesday night, that's tonight, at the National Constitution Center in Philly, Ms. Harris and Mr. Trump will have it have at it for 90 minutes. Ironically, the low expectations for Ms. Harris may be an advantage. All she has to do is not humiliate herself, and her performance will be hailed as a triumph. If the press corps did its job, we'd all know more about what we need to know about Kamala Harris and what kind of president she'd make. But because it won't, it's all on Donald Trump to do that job himself. So the question is, and Peter was trying to forecast what it's going to be like, if the mics are closed, how does he respond to uh, the questions that perhaps they don't ask from the podium? Yeah. Because the other component is the fact that over the last 72 hours, all of her surrogates have lowered the bar. They're saying, look, Donald Trump's done seven of these. This is her first. Mm -hmm. Essentially, he's the greatest presidential debater ever. So all she's got to do <laughs> is not humiliate herself, Be and people present. are going to go, hey, that was great. Well, Bill McGurn goes on to say that these reporters haven't been asking her questions about her policies. He says that reporters haven't insisted that Ms. Harris answer just basic questions. So the debate tonight might provide the only moment in this election right. when Americans get to see how she performs under pressure. She won't be able to take notes in there. They're going to have to ask her about her flip-flops. Will she have the word salads? I mean, she's been preparing. And the guy that's standing in for President Trump, you saw that picture of him, he says he's watched 15 Republican debates with Donald Trump. He's watched uh, the first time each debate the whole way through, the second time focusing entirely on the exchanges that he was part of, and then the third time with the sound off to watch Donald Trump's mannerisms. Right. Mm -hmm. Good luck with that. Uh, so is right the, I love the first story in the New York Times today. Uh, as the debate looms... Trump now facing questions about his age and capacity. Oh, really? Okay, that's it. They say, well, sometimes when he give, when he gives, gets remarks and gives answers to questions, uh, he gets uh, he does not as clear as he could be. And they say that uh, he misspoke a couple of times, saying uh, Obama instead of Biden. Well, it's interesting. A woman who really defines the word word salad is his opponent. She's given the same speech 25 times. And they say, well, she doesn't have that problem. By prompter. I mean, I was talking to uh, Judge Joe Brown over the weekend, who's been dealing with her for 20 years, and say that uh, she gets so lost in some of her answers, sometimes she thinks she says the early onset of dementia and that she could, she's a total fraud. Here's the one worry that they have. When you look at the breakdown, she's doing better than Joe Biden. That's what everyone thinks. But when you look at the breakdown of where Trump is doing better, it's with older uh, working class men. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden actually had a lead on Trump on that. Mm -hmm. And now she's got a, uh, he, uh, Trump has a six point lead on her on that. Somehow she's got to reassure seniors in America well, and, that she's got their help. And people that are typically a part of the Democratic firewall have said they don't know who she is. Mm -hmm. They don't know anything the about her. And that's that. a problem. Yeah. When you have minority voters that are saying that. You're having women uh, voters that are saying the same thing. I mean, we're... We know what spices out. she likes. That's exactly right. it. But we don't know... We don't it's know almost I, like the masked singer. 
you don't really know who it is until the end. <laughs> Are we going to find out who it is until the end? Right. I got a feeling she's going to present a new and improved Kamala Harris. Based on? <laughs> based on new stuff to win, according to what we've heard. And Bernie Sanders. Yep. So uh, Bernie Sanders says she's being pragmatic. Pragmatic. She's saying anything she can to win. To win. Tune into Fox News Democracy 24 special my coverage views. of the ABC <laughs> presidential debate. Our coverage begins tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. The debate then at 9 Eastern. So you can see it right here An hour on and 30 Fox. minutes. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.